Hey guys, welcome back to the struggle with Candace Thompson. I am Candace Thompson. Do I, I sound do, nasally? What do you? Why do you sound all quiet? Storm do I sound? All of a sudden? I know I do that when I I like to sound seductive. You sound like the female Tony the Baker struggle. right now. Like if you're a ja- <laughs> giving away cruise tickets. <laughs> Gas station. <laughs> I think it also, I'm just getting over like I was sick a little bit um, and I'm feeling much better over these past few days. But I still got, you know, like when you still got the like a hoarseness and you, mm-hmm. I wake up sounding like Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I had a friend trying to be polite when I was sick a few weeks ago and he was like, yeah, you, you sound a little sultry. I'm like, fuck you, man. It's not sultry. I sound like fucking my, my voice is just dropped. The, there is a sexiness, though, I think, to it when there's a little <gasps> bit of phlegm in there. Some scratch. Yeah, there was a Friends episode where Phoebe got sick and she sang and she had a little bit of rasp in her voice and she, she got many more fans <laughs> <laughs> because of it. And then when it went away, she was like, damn it. I feel it, though. I feel it, though. Um, Okay, let me intro. Okay. Shut up. (laughs) Up next, Key Sweat. (laughs) Key Sweat. Nobody. I want to be you. (laughs) Damn, a very left drop. You want to talk about nasal. Jesus. Yeah, no, he was. It sounded like he had an apartment complex in his nose. That's how nasal he was. (laughs) A studio? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, that was a. More like a, uh, what's a loft? Mm-hmm. <laughs> More of a nasal loft Yeah, a lot sound. of echo. A lot of echo in the loft. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> now shut up, for real. Okay. All right, guys. Welcome back to The Struggle with Candace Thompson. I'm Candace Thompson. What, who you heard speaking, I'll introduce her in a second. Um. <laughs> oh, I gotta wait. She's mad at me. Uh, yeah, now you're being punished. Go sit in the corner. <laughs> Um, to the new listeners, thank you for joining uh, The Struggle, where we talk about struggles that we're dealing with. I have friends come on, comedians. Sometimes they're not comedians, but most of the time they are. And we just riff on our adult lives and how difficult they can be sometimes. Um, I guess I'm going to introduce everyone and do like social media plugs. And then we're going to get into the, the meat of it for our new listeners. And you don't know how the show works. That's what's going to happen every episode. And then... Um, for our old listeners, thank you for thank you for supporting. You know, I really, really, really adore you, and thank you for you know coming into my Instagram and sliding into my DMs and telling me how much you love the show. But you know what? I'd love even more than that is telling somebody about the show. If you love the show, tell somebody, <laughs> share the news. More than that, go on iTunes and rate and review the podcast because it really does make a difference. So thank you for doing that, and thank you for supporting, of course. Now you can find me at on social media, jokes by Candace and Candace Thompson comedy.com. Also, this is going to be dropping on Tuesday, October 30th. And I know this is short notice, <laughs> but if anyone is in LA on the 30th and you want to come to a taping <laughs> that I'm going to be doing for the E network, um, slide into my DMS. Cause I'm going to be sending out a, a list to sign up. And if you want to come see me do a taping for a dance show on the E network, that'll I can be, hook that up. that'll be tonight. It'll be tonight. Yeah. yeah, very short notice. It'll be tonight, but slide into these DMs, and I think I can still make it happen. Um, now I'm going to introduce. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Remember that song? Yes. Who is that? Uh, it's the only lyrics from that song that anybody knows. It's been a while. Oh, that was Stained. Stained? Yes. That's what they were called? That was their ballad. Yeah. What's the song called? Do you know? It's been a while. It's been, <laughs> <laughs> it called, it's the been only, a while. The only part that's memorable, that's the name of it. The only white song I know, and Mal, you don't know what it is? No. I know all the other white songs except that one. <laughs> you tricky. You're more of a Hall and Oates guy. Yeah, I'm more of a Journey guy myself. <laughs> oh, I love Journey too. You tricky bastard. Uh, and there's my co-host, Mal Hall. Welcome back. You weren't in Montana with tricky, us last that's week. Beastie Boys. Tricky. Oh, they had a tricky. Yeah, it's another white tricky. band. Well, <laughs> but they were assimilated. Yeah, they were, they were they wiggers. assimilated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they assimilated. But the reverse culture. way, right? The reverse way. <laughs> they assimilated into black culture. Mm-hmm. Um, welcome back, Mal. You weren't with us in Billings. Who it was co-hosted? Cold. Who co-hosted? I didn't have you? a co-host. Okay. I just had because that's a, you know I didn't. That's a, you're, you have a select pool to choose from. Right. A lot of those people I, at that festival I didn't even know really well. So you I just had, had Paul co-host. He was he was doing the, the ones and twos. Oh. <laughs> you, you honestly, Paul just plays Candy Crush after he hits record. That's You're right. All he could have. You could have. You had you speak up. <laughs> I gave an intro. Oh, yeah, he did give an intro. <laughs> so there's that. What's up, everybody? Thank you. Um, like Candace was saying, I'll echo that. The listeners, you guys are amazing. Uh, there's a lot of people, because I take a lot of abuse on this podcast, and a lot of you. <laughs> 
slide into my DMs with support and tell me how <laughs> funny you think I am. And that really, it brightens my day. So It brightens. Is, it brightens you my did day. Say, you said it brightens my day. It, it, it brightens my day. <laughs> yeah, thanks for setting him up so we can just knock uh, him down uh, again. I appreciate yeah, that. It's a lovely up. cycle. <laughs> you tear him down. down. You can find me at malhall.com, at malhall on Instagram, all, basically all social media, at malhall and Malhall TV on YouTube. I'm vlogging again, so subscribe. Yay. And that's all. That's it. All right. So now I'm going to introduce our fantastic comedian guest today. Her name is Carmen Morales. (laughs) That's right. You don't want less Alice. You want more Morales. Mo. You were not supposed to laugh at that. That's how bad that joke was. (laughs) Anytime I I like it. I'm an easy laugher too. And I like like dumb jokes like that. It is. It's silly, but I like it. You should, like, whenever somebody's like, Wait, I, I don't want to say your name wrong, and then I'll do that. How and do you like, say that's it so, wrong? People are so, so stupid. And I'm like, yeah, and you'll remember because it's so dumb. I mean, I love it. I'm gonna. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm gonna call you now, <laughs> Mo Morales. <laughs> Morales. <laughs> um, thank you for being here, Carmen. Thanks for having me. You kidding me? This sounds great. <laughs> Candace and I did a podcast together, and <laughs> we basically did the podcast together, <laughs> but there are other people on it, and me and you were just kind of zoned in. We've, we uh, we have a fun chat. We're we good do. Chatters. Yeah, no, we bonded, like, immediately. Um, you, you know, I and I say this every time I have, a, like, a, you know, I don't have, like, I try not to have, like, people I don't actually like on the show. <laughs> like, if they're, if you come well, on the show, like, I think we're super today. cool. <laughs> exactly. I was like, normally, I have people I like. But, but this today, bitch, yeah. I could argue with this bitch. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew when we were talking shit at Kira's house that one time. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can trust her. <laughs> if you hate the same people I hate, we good. <laughs> right, right? Right. The enemy <laughs> of my friend is, wait, my enemies too. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that works. <laughs> yeah. What's your social media and stuff? Yeah. I'm uh, at the funny Carmen. There's a hot uh, Latina soap opera actress. Who's at the hot? Her name's Carmen. Carmen. Too. I don't know. Well, I just figured she's <laughs> she's the hot one, so I'll be the you funny be the one. Funny one. Mm-hmm. So at the funny Carmen, CarmenMorales.com for all of your Carmen Morales needs. Uh, I have a podcast too because they're like yes, business plug, cards plug. now, and everybody has them. Yes. Um, mine's called No Sir, I Don't Like It, and um, Candace has been on it. We've talked. We talked about some shit that you didn't like, which is very fun. Numerous things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was full. The, it was the full list has just grown since I <laughs> since, since I've done that podcast. Part two, part uh, two. It's called No Story. I don't like it. It's uh, we have comic guests on, and we talk about stuff they don't like, and it's like anything from behavior to pet peeves to pedophilia, quite literally anything you don't like. So, cool. Who likes pedophilia? <laughs> pedophiles. I guess pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, pedophiles Although I, I will fans. argue, a problem. Uh, I pr- I'm probably sure that like a lot of them have a lot of shame for the shit that they're into. Yeah. So they might not even like it either. Yeah, that's true. They just mm-hmm. can't help it. Yeah, there's probably the kind that don't have a conscience who just do whatever the fuck, and then then there's the kind that know that what they're doing is bad and are self aware but can't control it. Yeah. Maybe we should we should have like more uh, like pedophiles on the show. Absolutely. Well, next week we have my friend. How else are we gonna know if we don't talk to him? It is true. It's like racist. I want to know. Right. Sympath- it's same like with weed. Like we <laughs> podcast. It's the same like with marijuana. Like we couldn't find out what marijuana does if we didn't have access to it. Of course. We got to do the research. We got to do the bad to R&D, find out baby. the good. One hundred percent. She said she was gonna get stupid because we got we 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 did puff right before we started recording. What's up, bro? <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> what if I just talk like that every time? We like puffed. I came in here and I was talking normal. Who like, hey guys, what's puffed? going on? We puffed. We just puffed. And and you just say that like all the listeners are like, oh, okay, cool, cool. That sounds cool. like what hot girls what call am I farting. F- yeah, yeah. I, 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 so I, <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I puffed. I puffed. I puffed. Oh my god. So I just Toot pooted. Sounds so gross, I but I pooted. Puffed. That's like the cute. That's a cute fart. It's a puffed. puff. Oh, my farts are not puffs. I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that much. <laughs> You're a grown ass woman. <laughs> well, not only that, You're but these wafers of a human. I being. eat a lot of grains and greens. Brussels sprouts is <laughs> like a about very this, big yeah. part of Canada. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a part of my life. Um, Candace, what's your struggle? My struggle for this week is I did, I was debating between a few, but I think I landed on this one because I, I was like, well, I'm going to have another woman on the show today. I was like, I can get her insight on this. So I have been seeing somebody. Mal, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Whoa. For Wait, hold on. For real? Not at not no, and this is so so particular. But this is what the struggle is. Okay. (laughs) I've been seeing somebody casually. We're not in a relationship. We're we've been friends 
and now it has gone someplace new. Physical. Physically. And so I'm and I'm struggling with it because I'm not I don't know if I'm a casual sex person. Like I have never I have never executed a casual sex relationship properly or well. Like I don't know how I like I I feel like my body is like you you can do it but my head is like this isn't right. Cuz you're emotional. Yes. Yeah. I'm emotional. I like having somebody there and I'm I like knowing that they're not sleeping with other people. Like that makes me uncomfortable. And I don't know if that's just if that's normal or should I just should I just get over whatever and just can I my tell inhibitions? you, you have started so many stories to me that were like, so I'm having casual sex with a friend. <laughs> no. And now it's yes. No, my friend, the last one that I was dating wasn't casual at all. We were we were friends for three years and then we started and then dating. The story but that wasn't about casual. a douchebag, too, was also it was it was super casual, friendly. But, and, then, and then I fall in love with all of them. That's what I'm saying. Well, that's what you got. You can't be putting out there that you're cool with that. But that's what I'm saying. Maybe I am. And maybe it's my head. Maybe I am. But maybe it's because of society and that and growing up and, and living in a household with two like parents that were like in a long term relationship. Maybe I'm just conditioned to think I'm not a casual sex person, but maybe I can be. I just need to give it a shot. And I thought in this particular but instance with the guy that I'm seeing, I was like, I'm not going to want to date him. And I don't and I don't think I do. But. I still want but some of the boyfriend attach, stuff. You attach love to the physical stuff. Which I, yeah. Which is not a bad it's thing. It's not, a, and I think we all should. Yeah. yeah I, I think we should as people. Like, that's human oh, to me well, to have feelings. I don't think you should be telling people what they should do. I mean, they should be, you, you should, should be able to feelings. have sex with someone and then say, hey, man, appreciate it. Have a good day and leave. Like, you shouldn't, you sh of course, you should be able to do that. Of yeah. course. It shouldn't always have to be like a, a lot, like, because we're also, to me, I still think we're kind of primal. And I think we that's why are. guys are always still like, no matter what the tits look like, they're like, I want to see you. you right, know what I mean? they're, right. They're just, they just do shit like that. Of course. And they're never going to be like, my thing also, like I'm straight, are guys ever going to be okay with just like one woman? Like when there's so many options? I'm good with one. I think it depends on the person. <laughs> I, I honestly do think it depends on the person and the upbringing as far as the guys are concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm down to see like random titties, but like <laughs> I don't need to. I don't need to, that, I don't need to do anything. The after. way he said to, that was so polite. I mean, I'm down to see <laughs> random titties. Like sometimes <laughs> in my in my Snapchat, like people will just send Tits? photos. Yeah. Like boob pics. And I'm like, sweet. Full on breasts or like in bra? Full on titties. Full on titties. Full on titties. But that's the thing is, is the difference that I found. And I'm not seeking it out. I'm not like saying, hey, everybody after the show, my Snapchat is whatever it is. And of send me some titties. I don't, <laughs> I don't think anybody's <laughs> really doing that. I think they just I think come. that's happy. Are you kidding me? No, out there the are road? definitely guys that If asks. you're in Paducah, Kentucky and lonely. Paducah. Oh, I guess. But who's seeing that? Four people? Everybody wants to see a pair of Paducah titties. That's just... <laughs> sounds like a, a good band you name. They sound like they'd be nice. Titties. Pendulous Paducah titties. Yeah, I could see them. <laughs> they'd have some girth. They sound like they're smaller than bazooka titties. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think it's because we, we get more uh, invested in partners a lot of times that that's... We can't think about, like, if you want to look at titties, that means you want those titties. That means you don't want my titties, mm -hmm. you know? And that kind of logic is kind of what... But a lot of times with guys, it's just like, no, I just want to see titties. It doesn't yeah. mean I want to cheat on you. Yeah, I yeah. just... just There's yeah. tits, yeah, yeah. you know? And there's this fine with that. But back to my struggle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Focus, you guys. Like, the same do you wanna, thing over and over like, again. Do you want to talk yourself results? into being a casual sex person? Like, that's something I don't, you I want? I don't even know. But that's I, the thing is, it's it's all it is is your choice. Either you work on being a more casual sex person and allowing yourself to feel comfortable in that situation, or you don't do that and you just tell people you want a legit relate because there's dudes that want a legit relation. They don't all want to fucking. What if I yeah, just want to have sex with this person, but I don't want a relationship with them, but I don't want them sleeping with anybody else. <laughs> well, you can't, that's Can called, we be in a called, casual monogamous relationship? No, that's called having your cake and eating it too. You can't do that. But you can also, if that other person isn't searching for any, like, 
if he could be like, hey, man, I'm cool as fucking, but I kind of just want you to only fuck me. And like, and just even for like a cleanliness point of view. You know and I mean? that's my, that's my biggest thing is just, I don't want, like, I in, in my head to, to like even think that like he was with somebody intimately like the day before, it like grosses me out a little bit. Sure. So just tell him. I mean, yeah, I've done that to dude. dudes. I've been like, hey, man, I like that we're fucking. I'm not trying to ask for anything more. Yeah. I just don't want you having a dirty dick. You know what I mean? I don't want a dirty dick inside So that's of me. fair of me to do that? I've done it. And the guy's been cool with it's it? A, yeah. From, from I mean, if they if they aren't, they'll just say, nah, I want to fuck whoever I want. And then be like, all right. And then you can not fuck that guy anymore. That's the other thing, too, is there's so many guys. You don't have to worry there about are, fucking but you know guy. how particular I am. You, you are. You know. Very particular. <laughs> 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 Shut up, Mal. I am very particular. Yeah, I just think that. I mean, you, she's right. You could totally ask, but that's basically saying like you I, told I don't, me it, I should uh, I can't do that. Like I don't want. But that's also telling him where exactly where she's at. Yeah, that's fine. But she, but if she, but Candace wants to have the sex. Yeah, why so wouldn't I? So if you t ask a guy like, "Hey, man, can you only fuck me? We don't have to have a relationship, but." But just only hook up with me. You're asking him to be your boyfriend. No, I'm not because I'm not that's asking anything. Like no, I'm not. No, I'm not asking him to like pick me up at the airport. I'm not expecting him to come over every night and like be there to like and yeah, get but part me stuff of the when freedom, I'm sick. Part of the freedom of being single is oh, having the option open to do whatever you want to do. Of course. And, you're, and he still has the option, but, but I would just like him to tell me first if that's what he's going to oh, do. So that's what you should say. Then. So it's not hey. like a breakup. So It'd just be like a okay. here. Here is a stack of permission slips and you let me know which one of these girls you want to smash just so I can give you permission first. Well, I'm not even permission. I'm just saying, well, not even that. I'm just saying if you, I can stop sleeping wants. with him. That's what I'm saying. It's not some oh. guy that's fucking a bunch of people all at the same time. Like, you got to understand, you're going inside of us, man. Yeah, that's like... way more invasive. Right. Yeah. Unless, I'm, unless uh, you know, because even if we put something inside of you, it's not like a bodily, you know what I mean? Like, Right, but I'm not fighting for... Like I'm on your side, but I'm just saying. Are I, you Mal? <laughs> I'm saying that when you when you ask a guy that, it's like that just seems like okay. Well, this is step one, and then step two is going to be like. And you know, look. Can I also keep a toothbrush at your house? Which is funny because I he does have one in my house. <laughs> <laughs> now, but it's, step and, three. But can I get not, this drawer right here? There's not know, really a lot engaged. of stuff. In here. <laughs> And here's the thing is that because I'm so cool with this person, mm -hmm. something could evolve. Right. Something could totally evolve. I do not know. Am I wanting that to happen? I don't know. Am I expecting that to happen? I don't know. I'm just here to have fun and enjoy these moments because we get along really well. Mm -hmm. And that's it. But it's that little, it's a little piece of me. You know, as women, we have hormones. You know, there are hormones that we have in our bodies that make us cling after we have sex. It makes us more attached. That's why you yeah, cuddle? The, yes. Yeah. Well, not like physically it's a cling, hormone. But it makes us like you, even if we don't like you. Yeah, that's why we make such bad decisions. Right. It's so the vagina cloud. So you don't even know if you're ke just chemically attracted to this guy because he makes you come. Right. Or if you really like, I mean, you obviously are already friends with this dude, so you like this we, dude. Yeah, no, I have so much love for this person. Mm -hmm. He's one of my really good friends, and he's like a really nice person on top of it. So here's my there's question. There's always a love there. Why are yeah. you even struggling with this? Why don't you just allow it to happen? If something doesn't happen, you go, hey, I don't like this. Or if you want something, you go, hey, I'd like this. Is that cool with you? And you just ask. The thing you is, mean communicate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, Candace is. What that mean? Candace, you are a girl and you're acting like a dude right now, sort of. Like, Am I? Yeah, just say what you want. Well, and here's the thing is that I do normal. I'm normally very good with communicating. Yeah. It's just this is because this is new for what we're doing. The two, we're, we're used to communicating as friends and now we're at this whole nother level of. Uh, so, so give me. <laughs> this is personal, but let me know what you think about what happened last night. Okay. Oh, this is juicy. Yes. Oh, wait. Well, not... not I didn't mean it's not it. Juicy. I didn't even, even it's not mean juicy. It's not juicy. Like that. <laughs> oh, it is juicy. Wait till you hear why. I couldn't... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mal already knows where this is going. So, he texted me and was like, uh, what's going on tonight? Whatever. And I was like, I'll be home at this time, whatever. And he was like, bet I'll be... I'm done at this time. And I was like, well, you can come over to like... And we can snuggle and stuff. <laughs> all time i like snuggling snuggling and we can hang um but just fyi like it's my time of the month so mm. bernice is here. bernice is here you know bernice that bitch <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah she's killing she's wrecking me right now 
So then he just writes back emoji. Well, you know, this emoji with the teeth, like, ah, like, uh, e. right, like, e. yeah. And then that was it. And I knew I was like, in my head, he's not going to want to come over now. Right. Um, but at the same time, a part of me was like, should my feelings be hurt? Because that's like saying, oh, you can't have sex to offer. So you just don't even want to hang out me with as a, as a person, <laughs> which I know is not true because we've hung out so many times where nothing happened before. So that that's the part of me that's just like you're being stupid. But at the same time, I also had gas because Bernice is here. So I was lighting it up and I was like, it's kind of good that he didn't come. <laughs> It's layers of things happening. You were puffing all over the house. Puffing. Puff as puff. Call back. But should I have felt a certain way? Like, would that have hurt no. your feelings if a, if a, if you said I can't have sex tonight and he was still like, mm, okay, then bye. Uh, but see, I, I, I'm I'm incredibly assertive. So I would have just been like, oh, oh, you think I'm gross? You fucking nasty. And like, I would have gone like I would have made fun of him for him having for having that reaction, for being weirded out by something that's right. the most natural. Hey, man, I'm not pregnant, bro. Like you should be celebrating this. Celebrate. Bring me a motherfucking cake. <laughs> Bring me a goddamn cake. I'm not knocked up. I'm going to text you next time. I need to respond. to <laughs> You're just going to be my Cyrano de Bergerac, <laughs> a.k.a. Hitch, a.k.a. <laughs> Truth About Cats and Dogs. But that was basically like an invite to cuddle. Yeah. And like, I mean, dudes aren't like the biggest fans of cuddling. Oh, no, I that's know, not true at all, man. I've had so many dudes come, like want to come over and ask, specifically ask to cuddle. Look, we've been I in. Would say, I, I would say that you found the three out of 10 guys. Though. No, no, we there's there's and maybe it's not long term. Like, I don't want to sleep through. I don't want to cuddle all throughout the night. Like, I want to cuddle and then break away and have my own space. But like the person I'm talking about, he spent the night a couple weeks ago but like in like cuddled in the morning like reached over for me so it's like there's cuddling yeah that's like a that's like a that shit ain't true man that's yeah. like some shit that guys tell each other yeah but, Mal. but it's not true when I it's mean, like you don't I like mean, cuddling at it's all it's okay that you don't like I it mean, i cuddle i'll cuddle when i know that she wants me to cuddle yeah but until it's like a point like I don't I'm not a, it's uncomfortable maybe you're in the wrong spoon maybe you need to be the little oh, spoon yeah Ooh. <laughs> yeah you maybe gotta switch position you gotta new move you gotta position, move new <laughs> position <laughs> was that did you just do Aaliyah Aaliyah yeah yeah you gotta you change your place reference. in the cutler drawer okay, that's all it is okay, cool, you gotta cool. switch sides cool, cool, that's cool, the song cool, that killed cool. her how dare you you just have to be a backpack on another woman like oh yeah 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 backpack Right. Or or yeah. maybe you want her you want to wear could, a lady as a be, backpack. She could be my backpack. Yeah. My little, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Had not thought about that, Carmen. See? Just I'm gonna switch, intru- I'm gonna introduce positions. some new shit to the to the <laughs> post sex routine. It doesn't have to be post sex. I wonder I wonder if bef- pre sex there could be no sex. Babe, Just hold me. Break out the spoon. <laughs> hold me, babe. We're open to spooning any time of the day. Cuddle me. Dude, babe. if you told your girl, put your strong ass arms around me, lady, she would fucking love it. <laughs> put your strong <laughs> Come here, put, I wanna feel them, those biceps. <laughs> wrap them strong ass stems around me, baby. Come on. Flex those forearms <laughs> on me right now, girl. <laughs> Does Carlene lift? Is she <laughs> She's more of an orange theory person? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what they do in there. They, they just, just, just talk oranges. about working out in theory as opposed <laughs> to doing it. <laughs> With a bunch of oranges. <laughs> Work up your heartbeat <laughs> while you hold me. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Do we, how much, we went over, huh? Yeah. We had no time for male struggles. We're going to skip my str- struggle. Str- no, no, what's, we're, what's, it's, it's your time, Carmen. I'm worried about you. Carmen, it's what's, time for your struggle. <laughs> Be, well, the cuddling thing is just struggle. I feel. How like. about? I don't really struggle with it. I just you just don't like. I'm it. very vocal too. I say like, get your arm off me, bitch. Yeah, I'm like it's too hot. <laughs> well, well, no one likes hot cuddling. Too, yeah, yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody likes a yeah. hundred degrees outside. I am a person that sleeps on top of my bed, regardless of the temperature. Like it has to be on top of it the has comforter. To be un, it has and to be the sheets. It has to be under sixty degrees for me to like get under the get sh- under covers. Oh, that sounds awesome. So that sounds like me every time hot. I'm in a hotel room. It's always hot. You guys are crazy. So in hotel rooms, I can control it. I like being under the covers because I set the thermostat to like 65. You're yeah, insane. That's me. You're yeah, insane. Yeah. No, dude, that's the way to do it. You are then insane. Then you can build a, you build a pillow igloo around you. No. And it creates like this no. nice little warm bubble in this frigid mm-hmm. ass outside mm-hmm. world. And then it's when you get great. up to pee, you're like, ooh, no. it is cold. Ooh. <laughs> and then you pee and then you go back into your old snuggles. <laughs> What? Well, you guys are psychopaths. We're 
not psychopaths. What do you do? We set it to 75 degrees? 83. Ugh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it a little chilly at night. But of course, because you're undercovers and stuff. So at the lowest, at the lowest, 69. 69. Oh. Because I'm a child. 67 is lowest. like the baseline. No. The first thing I do when I get into a hotel room is drop that bitch down to yep. s- as low as it will possibly yep. go. Yep. 65. Yep. No. Facts. Mm-hmm. What's your struggle, Carmen? Um, My struggle is I, I am in a place uh, between the fear of success and the fear of failure. Oh, this that is crux, a good one. That purgatory. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm willing to do the work uh, for the success, but I don't want a lot of the shit that goes with it. It's my cake and eat it too. I want to. I don't want every. I don't want anybody to hate me, but I want everybody to love me. And you, know, you can't do that. This is the second time the having a cake and eating it too has been mentioned on this podcast, and I would like to say, why can't I have? My cake. Did I buy this cake? Is this my cake? Why can't I also eat it? No, it's just a piece of cake. You can't have it and eat it. What do you mean? Because it's Cause gone if you after eat I it, eat yeah, it? Yeah, if you yeah. eat it, it's gone. Yeah, oh, that's what it means? Yes, that's exactly oh, what it means. Never mind. <laughs> that changes everything. We, we just taught Candace how a cake and eat it too today. That's I never awesome. understood that. Yeah. That's what it means? Well, yeah, yeah, it's not like a full cake so you can have a piece and then still have your cake. That's what it means? Yeah, it means like you if have a piece of cake. Someone gives you a piece of cake, you have a piece of cake now. Yeah, you're like, But I if you cake. eat it, that's what that means? Yes. This whole time? <laughs> <laughs> you, are you struggling with any other pastry based? So no, 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 is there any like croissant based <laughs> 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 analogies that I'm trying to think of? I, you got another really? baker that yeah. tripped you up with some shit one time? <laughs> maybe. And that's just interesting because I think maybe because like it's just it's so cake specific. Like it could be that could be with anything. Like you can't yes. have right, but anything that you could eat you or can't that have your ramen and eat it too, Candace. It's that better? I like it better the other way, the way I interpreted it. <laughs> How did you interpret well, how did, yeah, it? Yeah, what did you think it means? I just thought you can't have it and also eat it. <laughs> but not like, but not in the way that it would disappear. Just like you can't have it and also just partake in it. Like, why so, not? It's mine. That's the way I was like, but it, it, so that saying never made sense to me. So to you, it's like, I have this cake. Why wouldn't why I Why can't I eat it? it? What's the point why of having the cake if I can't eat it? You thought I'm, it was some of it. Not the entire cake. That's well, the, why. The, the, that's it, why. The, it, the it not existing anymore never even was a part was a part of the equation. In so that. why can't in I have world, a piece of this cake? That's literally every time someone would say that, it would bother me. I'm like, it's my cake. <laughs> I'm gonna have a piece what, if I want, and we, then I still have and it. And it's cake. And but then also a part of me hearing that's like, I can eat the cake, and then so what? I'll just get mo cake, right? Like it's. Just cake. Man, I wish I could live in a world where I had just an avalanche of abundance like you do. Just in, in your more psyche, cake. you're like, the cake will always be there. It didn't make it, 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 it because it's first, it's just cake. Sometimes people got to struggle to get the motherfucking cake, Candace. I've always had cake. <laughs> Maybe that's my struggle. Oh my God. Because I've always had too much. Oh my God. You rich cake. I've been bitch. living this life of abundance. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, lay a cake, bitch. Yo, rich ass cake, always having cake ass, bitch. You oh, Is that bitch. really how everybody interpreted that, Paul? Did you know that, that that's what that meant? <laughs> I gotta do interesting. I've Listeners, never. Please send Candace all the memes about having cake and eating it too. too. <laughs> I was just always like, there's always an abundance of cakes. <laughs> Oh, birthday a cake having cake. every day, yes, bitch. <laughs> I was like, they give you birthday cake so you can eat it. But then you don't have it. But then, right, so what? It's just cake. But the, it's, oh, but so, but the to same. you, because you ate it, you already, you have, you have it. I had it. It's in, it's in Who you. Who wants cake that often, right? Like you eat it and you're good. Well, apparently like another- you have cake all the motherfucking time, so. Cake is a, is a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh but back to we we digress. Back to your struggle. <laughs> <laughs> Not, what, so what's enough your, of my what's basic your, learning so, skills? Like, what's your biggest fear of success? Yeah, what are the parts that you and what are the parts you can't? You feel like you don't want to deal with. Um, I think I have like some white guy fear. You know, like what you mean? Like, I mean, like you know how like that chick from SNL got fired over a tweet and stuff like that. Like, I've always who got fired off of a tweet. I mean, it was like a couple years ago. Was it a writer or yeah. what? Oh, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And it was a lady. Mm-hmm. She tweeted a silly joke and then, like, you got to go. Yeah, she got fired over it. So uh, it's just stuff like that. Like, 
I, I'm all about being self-exploitative. I mean, I chose a career in that. Um, but at the same time, I don't want 120 characters to take my money away. Oh, no, for sure. Like, I have already uh, gone through my tweets and deleted stuff that I know. Like, back, cause back even back in the day, like, we used to be able to say, like, tranny not that long ago. So I had some tweets. I was like, oh, I surely have to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. Anything with gay. I was like, I just, keyword, gay. Just get rid of it. Fat, get rid of it. Like, you have to, because they can come back to haunt you for sure. You went through your entire, how many tweets? No, not in, not all of them, because uh, you. Can, I don't even think you can do that. But they, like, they archive. And so there's a search function that you can go and just search a keyword and oh. then it'll pull up that tweet from whenever, oh. however long ago, or all the tweets that'll say that have that word in it. I'm going to do that too. You have to. Yeah. yeah. Taylor Swift. So but that's the thing is I don't, we I shouldn't don't have like to. that. The whole of reason I got into this is, is cause free speech. Yeah. I want to say whatever the fuck I want to. It's gone, Carmen. It is gone. We no, I don't goodbye. accept that. I don't accept that. Then fuck you. Then that's I just I, won't be famous. You know what I mean? Then that's, and that's fine. That's but how that's I, I honestly is. feel that way. Like we, when you censor people and this is how, and I talked about this, this. is not motherfucking China, bro. It's not China. That's the whole fucking point. The All only reason this place is as cool as it is. And the reason why so many other people from other different countries still come here, even though they shit on it, it's because we can say whatever the fuck we want to. And absolutely. And a lot of awful things have been done and been said and but uh, that's what freedom that's, is. That's what people that's don't exactly, understand. Exactly. That's what freedom is. But and that's also how change comes. Is because these things happened. And, and if, if you know what I'm saying, if they weren't allowed to even do them, then how can we change this behavior? You see what I'm saying? For sure. So it's like if stuff needs to be said and done. If people hadn't said outlandish shit, then we would have never even like things would have never slowly changed socially. Like the fact that we don't all have to get married. We don't all have this the societal pressure of you having to do this this specific way has been phased out more and more over time. And it's because people like us comedians who say outlandish shit and then people are like oh maybe i don't have to define myself by these things that other people have set up maybe i don't have to it's all of that shit and sometimes you have to cross a line to find out where the line is and you absolutely. have to cross the line for even people because you always have to go overboard to get people to go a little bit absolutely that's why everybody loves stories of people with like that change themselves all the time is because change is so difficult for so many people mm -hmm. overcoming adversity is a feat for anyone. Absolutely. But then at the, t at the same time, people don't want to witness that happening. No. Without them, you have to do it they perfectly. Just want, right. They just want everyone to understand everything and be sympathetic and just have a 100% understanding of where that person comes from without g the process of getting there. And we're not taking into consideration that their experience is different, that their Absolutely. upbringing is different, that it's all different, you know? Yeah. 100%. I, when I did a... Uh, Rogan's podcast, I said the word tranny and I did say that I didn't understand why we like that. Why? Because to me, it was just a cute saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like, you know, it didn't sound like it was negative to me. I didn't fully understand why mm -hmm. people were like, you shouldn't say that. And because of that, <coughs> people came and they explained and they were like, well, it's diminutive, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, we're having a healthy conversation about this. And it's like that never would have happened if that had been a word that I was just like, you can't say. You know what All I'm right. saying? So like. Well, that's either is is my whole thing is if if it, you also have to be patient with change. Yes. And that's the whole thing is, is and I mean, I can't I won't say it. I mean, the most concise way is the Dave Chappelle bit about it, you know, where it's like it's been this long and we're still dealing with racism. You right. can't expect people to change over overnight. Yeah. Right. To, to get it or over a hundred years. <laughs> right. <laughs> like yeah. it takes time. There's a festering wound and to expect that to get cleaned up. Well, to think about it, there's only going to be like one or two children out of a family that sort of change how they think because they're, when people have kids, they download whatever their thoughts are Absolutely. into that kid. And it takes like good education, good teachers to sort of and another Change. influence, yeah. a, 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 another outside, uh, like a uh, representative of parental influence. Right. You know? and, and the kid has to be open to something different. Right. And depending on what's happening at home, that, you know, that's like why racism still exists. Right. Because there's still half of this country that are teaching their kids that black people stick with black people. White people, right. we stick with white people. And you need down, down the line. Exposure. And it's like people learn through what they're taught more than through experience now.
Right, instead. because they're just not exposed yeah, to. Like if you just, you know, met another white person or met a black person it's and like judge them on their of, own merit, you know. Exactly. Like I I look at my family, like my extended family, and my mom is from this po dunk town in Virginia called Dinwiddie. Like her whole family like lived on one block. She had seven brothers and sisters growing up, kind of on like a farm adjacent <laughs> type of property. Right. <laughs> and my mom was the only one that got out of that of Virginia. She got out. She moved to New York when she was like 19. And then she met that's how she met my dad. And like then so I was raised in New York as opposed to being raised in like Virginia. And then we moved to Cincinnati. So I'm getting all these different exposures, at, especially at such a young age. But I look back because I was just talking to my mom over the phone. And she's talking to me about like how my one cousin is a grandfather at 41. What? The oh, wow. He's still in Virginia and like has, I think like two or three stepkids and then another, and two of his own. I don't know, it's a blended family. And then another, my other cousin, he has a daughter. It's an older cousin, but he has a daughter that's like 22 and she just had a kid by a dude who has like four other. And, I, and the, then I have another cousin. My mom was like, oh, Candace. Yo, cousin, her daughter threw her prosthetic leg into the woods. <laughs> what? And I'm so, <laughs> what? And that's Was a that's a to... quote from my mom. Were the woods attacking her, and she felt like that was her? Yo, she, no, 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 no. My, Throw off a no, bear or something? Like, no, oh, no, no. no. She took part. her mom's prosthetic leg. So my cousin is the mom. She took my cousin, her mom's prosthetic leg. And just threw it into the woods. She's like, I'm going out. Now go hop and get your leg. <laughs> wow. Like that? Yeah, she's like an insubordinate child. Wow. That's crazy. And so these are the stories, like my mom, and I'm just sitting here like, that wasn't me because you got out. Simple decision. You went to a big city and you got, <laughs> right? It's yeah. crazy the how mentality. it's a butterfly effect, though. It is, and, and it depends on where you grow up, how you think about the world. Yep. And and we get to see that because we travel and and I am empathetic for those people. Like I was of in course, Biloxi, Mississippi, and like they look different. Yeah. And happiness to them isn't what happiness is to people that look at the world as a big place rather than like a, a little small tiny. place. Well, that's the other thing, too, is is because of the Internet, like people are being intolerant of the fact that you can think as small as you want to or as big as you want to. Right. You know, some people's world never leaves a two like stoplight town, right. you know, and that's all that they care about. So when they hear about all of these other concepts or like larger places with, you know, a, a more diverse uh, like outlay of human beings. They're just like, I don't, ah, it's scary. It's confusing. It's change. I don't want to, I'm comfortable. Like the right. way I don't want whatever I have to change at all, you know? And also a lot of it I think is fear-based too. Absolutely. Fear-based and ignorance usually. Right. Absolutely. That's a recipe for hate. racism. Yeah. Hate <laughs> for a hundred percent. So how do you feel about like, and I think I already know the answer to this, but like when they cancel like Alex Jones, who was the conspiracy theorist who was like, who Trump well, was cool I thought with. it was He's... more entertaining when it was like proper conspiracy theory. You know, 9-11 was an inside job. It's fun to get high and, and, and travel down that rabbit hole. Sure. Of course. You know, but at the enter, same time. entertain any conspiracy theory. Yeah. I'm not going to say either whether, I mean, we don't have proof of that didn't happen and we can't prove it any other way, you know, and just in, just in general with any conspiracy theory, but. To, it's just a fun mental exercise. Absolutely. It's fun to just talk what about if? it. It's also like, what if there was like, what if like the moon was really made of cheese? <laughs> it's the same. It's or just cake. as silly. Because <laughs> then you could have a moon, but you couldn't eat it too, Candace. You can't oh, I'm eat, eat the moon. my moon. <laughs> it's not a moon pie, goddammit. <laughs> um, but then, like, he got, you know, it. he devolved to me into, like, this weird product pushing. Like, he became the establishment that he was always supposed to be against. And right, right, right. So it was a fucking cancel it. I don't give a shit. I mean, it's all fake anyway. So who gives a shit? Right. But he, what, since we're talking about like just freedom of speech, like he was just talking. He should have a right to talk just like the rest of us. Right. Well, so it's like, how do we pick and choose what gets canceled? Because I, I, 
I don't think like he got, yeah, we he got pushed he got squeezed out by the left because the left owns Facebook, so they're like, mm, you can't right with do your that shit on your here. alternative facts and mm. your they own Twitter as well, so it's like no, you can't put that shit on here, right? Like, but like here's but the thing it goes is, both ways. Like I mean, who's to say he sh- he should have a right to speak? Right. And even if we don't, we have a right to change the channel. But y- yeah, that sounded so eighties. <laughs> <laughs> you could change the station. Uh, you can find the clicker in the couch and you change the, the channel. Clicker knob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss old school stuff. I do. <laughs> but I'm sorry to cut. What were you saying? Um, I just think that like it's that weed. Well, because we have like so many options as far as entertainment anyways. So it's like, why does this guy have to lose money even though people support him? Because you don't like what he says. Right. Again, that's still censorship. Even that's, though, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even though I'm for everything that the, the left is for, like for, but I don't. But censorship well, some is. Some of it's ridiculous. Like, well, yeah, because they go too far. And that's like, right. <laughs> you're becoming a mirror of the opposite side. Which you're doing the exact same behavior. Yeah, it's right. the same thing. So you can't be like, it's like you're pussies and your libtard cucks, but then at the same time you're cyber bullies and you're mean right. and like the trying thing. to get people fired and stuff. So it's like, that's just as shitty behavior as like what they're doing, On what you're accusing side. them of doing. Yeah, both Absolutely. of it's, it's gross. And that's why people like us are just in the middle going, I can't wait till you guys are done fighting so we can actually try so can, something real. Right. Yeah. Um, so is that, you, you said that's one of the things that you're, you don't want to have to deal with in the onset of, uh, fame is like censorship and getting called out for a tweet or just speaking. It's just your truth or people trying to tell me, cause I, uh, they're part of the reason I have this, like I'm into this is because I don't like being told what to do or like what I think. Like I get to say specifically what I think or what I feel in Absolutely. a very hilarious fashion, right. you know, and um, for people to be like, oh, you hate this or you like you people, all the the people trying to tell you what you are doing when you yourself know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. And sometimes people don't know what they're doing. And so like that's most people. Yeah. Most of the time. And it's fun to not know what you're doing. That's like exciting me every right. day. Again, that's how you learn. Right? right. If you didn't know, like if you. If you you would have kept living your life not knowing that you can have a My cake, cake or you can eat it. Yes. If this you conversation been, hadn't happened today. Right. I would still not understand what that saying meant. Would be walking if you around hadn't this not world, known cake at 27 years old, just thinking. <laughs> 27. <laughs> just thinking. 27 <laughs> for life. Why would he say have your cake and eat it too? What a dumb guy. You could totally have you more. Can, why can't you have your <laughs> cake and eat it? That's what cakes are made for is eating. Who just going to get a cake and look at it? Plus, like, if you eat the cake, then you have it. It's mine, bitch. It's in my stomach. Right. That's just, we don't want that. But anyway. And the tranny thing, that's another perfect example, but was also great is you were open. You weren't like, I'm saying fucking tranny. I don't give yeah, a no, fuck with anybody. That's also being I'm not going to die on that hill. Like, really? that's so stupid. But like, once again, like, because you were do. like, I, I what, what, why? Yeah. Why can't we? And just, I just needed an explanation. And I'm right. Like it is, a, I do like, it's a cute word to me and I miss saying it, but I'm not going to fight for it. That's ridiculous. I still, I still, it's still think tranny is way cuter than trans. It is. It yeah. is, but it's diminutive, and that's the like. I know, it's and that like sucks. if someone was like, "Hey, Blackie," <laughs> <laughs> and I, and that's what it took for me. I was, oh, I want to punch you in the face right now, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, I, I get it now. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just wish there was like we could have like a summit where we could talk about which words were cool. And which ones weren't just by the way they sounded like training just sounds more because fun at the, end of that, at the end of that conference, the conclusion would be no words are cool. <laughs> no words. That's what we figured out on this 14 day conference. <laughs> It'd be like, call me by my name or nothing else. Otherwise, <laughs> everything just other than my name, name is not cool. Name? I think we should just start wearing name badges. Then we don't even have to worry about pronouns. Well, and that I still am not clear about they, because that to me just doesn't make sense grammatically. Because you're now well, it is grammatically up, incorrect. Even that's and that's the problem I have with it. If you want to come up with it, if you are now going to go by they, who's going? By you are they? one person. Who's going by they? people that don't want to gender conform? Non non binary. So not his or not her. If they fuck go, the, fuck those people. They go. <laughs> <laughs> they go by this they. Is, this is Mel Hall. I stand by this. Yeah. 
If it's a dude, <laughs> call him a dude. If it's a girl, call him a girl. But not if they don't want that. They're just going to. That's the. But this is the world we live in. Like they can say, that's like, gonna be I don't their, go by him or her. That's going to be they. their struggle for life because we teach kids. That's a boy. That's a girl. Oh, I know. But that's that's and, not going to change. Of course. Of course. No, that will never change. Um, I mean, that's happening now hey, in San Francisco. Johnny. Is there that like little kids are learning that they and them are options? Like, I I know guys who are dad comics who have bits about their kids being like, "This is my friend. This is a they," and like they have to and like so. There's dads learning from their kids about this stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I it's don't. it's a lot. Oh wow! I'm a very tolerant person, but some of this shit is just it's, silly. It's a lot, especially when there's I'm like when you still tolerant. continue to dress a certain way. Like if you look like a dude, yeah, and then get like, oh, there was a dude. This just happened at JFL this year. There was a dude in the women's bathroom who was dressed like a dude, has a dude haircut, like had on a baseball cap, and me and there was another who I forget who I was with, another female comic, and we were like, you know, this is the this is the women's room, and they were like, I'm trans. And I'm like, even if you are trans, you are trans man because you look you are a man. So you need to be in the men's room. I'm they. But the fact that this is <laughs> right, that this is even a conversation. Like what's on that bathroom for they? It's I just the, it's, what's the all, sign? It's the gender neutral. It'll say gender neutral. Yeah. It just means guys and girls go to the same bathroom. Which now. is just they do that all the time. Like yeah. we've had yeah. those bathrooms since the, the beginning unisex of time. bathrooms. Yeah, yeah. right. What's wrong with the unisex? I don't know. Unisex but when they are unisex, sounds like it covers all of it, right? But when they universal do universal sex, <laughs> you and I sex. <laughs> when they when Ooh. they have the unisex, it's usually just a one stall bathroom. So it's just one person. Then you lock the door, and it's open for anybody. But it's only one person allowed in it. So right. now it's like there's multiple stalls. But if it's as gender neutral, then anybody should. I feel be so with bad for stalls. business owners <laughs> that have to deal with this. <laughs> I got to get new signs. I got an eight table restaurant, but I also got nine bathrooms. In here. <laughs> Everybody gets their own. <laughs> yeah, I thought the whole bathroom thing was really confusing because I was like, we've already had mixed bathrooms. We've already had mixed bathrooms, mixed bathrooms. But on top of that, we've already been dealing like what have these people been doing up until now? No one but said up, anything. So let's just continue with what we're doing. They've been using bathrooms f- that are not necessarily for their gender, and no one's complained about it. We haven't had any issues, so why is it now an because issue? Because this is a time where people, which is cool that people feel like they could voice their, they could f- feel like they could be heard, and everybody wants an audience now. And so now they've, they're it's empowered. Time. They're empowered to say what they want. I'm they. That's hilarious. I did not know that that was a thing. Yes. I'm they. I'm they. And it's like, oh, there. someone was, a comic was telling me, they got brought up, They the host is not saying his or him or her anymore. They're just saying they at a comedy show he did. And I was like. No. That's yeah, but that, a, that's I the mean. other, that's the other side of it was we're like, okay, don't be, don't tell me I'm what right. I am. Right. Like, you I'm know? fine. If they're saying they want to be called they, then use that, but don't blanket they, everybody. <laughs> like. We not all I'm just days. Cover my them bases. Their their bases. Them's bases. Them's bases. I'm gonna cover them's, them's bases. Bases. <laughs> we got so way off topic. Um, we were supposed to be talking about your struggle. That's all right. I know it's we just, we dovetailed into this, but yeah, I just get scared of so, like it just all been take being taken away from you. All being taken away from me. Uh, also, uh, like the. I think this happens with a lot of comics, the the fear of not being ready for uh, the opportunities that are presented to you, not being good enough for them, um, you know, all, all of those things. And then so that's all the fears, the fear of failing side. And then the fear of succeeding side is like not being able to handle, you know, people telling me that I'm a piece of shit or go fuck yourself, drink ble- bleach and die. And that's just what I've gotten it, so far. Right. I was going to that happens now on the scale of just whatever level we are right now. Yeah. So imagine being like a. Kardashian level of fame. Yeah, but I think once you get to that level, you understand what it is, and you just don't read the fucking comments. No, but it's well, still. I don't, read, I don't read comments now. No, but it's still, it still can like. That's self-loathing an, that drives you to do that. Oh yeah, no, and I'm not even saying no. It's just hard to avoid it at that point because if you, especially if you're a person who's on social media, all you're gonna see some of it. You're gonna see it. So unless you literally block your comments. Which doesn't help for trying to build yeah, your social media. Engagement, right. yeah. Right. 
So it's, it's the like part that nobody ever talks about. We talk about like being like regular people. And then it's easy for you to really curate who and what has access to you. And then people who are really famous, but it's the gray area, the part in the middle, that's like the most difficult to navigate, you know, because you're just trying to generate interest from like a lot of people. Um, also, while not wanting people to fucking hate you for no reason, like I haven't even done anything. I don't really have that you're much a of a woman, influence. Carmen, right. stop it. There's reason right there oh. for all the hate. <laughs> you are a brown woman <laughs> how dare you think people weren't going to have reasons to hate you um you came out ready for the hate <laughs> well that's the other thing too is people hate us mal <laughs> i had a very powerful conversation with my woman uber driver from the airport yesterday oh really she's brazilian and she was telling me about all the crap that's going on you have on a big booty there. Those bitches she, in mean, Brazil she, get a big old booty. I mean, she was sitting way up high, so yeah. So she probably a huge butt. <laughs> I mean, that or she you had a really it. long torso. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's so big you can see from the side. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, she had some on the armrest. She was you just resting that, the side. That ass runoff. If she was steering with her ass, then you know like, it's big. I was like, why am I in the passenger seat? But I feel like I'm in the middle seat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said in the passenger seat yeah you don't I get don't, in the back no who are you that you get in the back i get in the back you're by yourself a lot of people with another just random person it's a driver no it's not <laughs> it's, a, it's a person with a car that's trying to it scratch is. out a but it a, is technically a, a driver they're called uber drivers or lyft drivers technically yeah but if you're if if i'm with another person i'll hop in the back seat yeah i do it mainly because i don't want to talk most but of the time i hop i like in the space. front and have a conversation yeah, that's what I don't want to do. But you gotta remember, sometimes these drivers don't want to fucking talk to us either. Especially we're women too, so we get in there with a dude. We like, mm, I definitely don't want to. That's true. That's I. That's, that's why I always that's I carry fine. a weapon. Yeah. So anytime I was like, they I put the knife in her face, they go, "Don't fucking talk." You to must me. have a high Uber rate. Yeah, I do. <laughs> do you five? Yeah, five. I'm like a five. No point, one has a five. Oh no, no, it's a four point. I'm eight, seven I think or four I'm, point I'm nine. Four eight. I think that last yeah. time I checked, uh -huh. I didn't check. Someone checked. I didn't even know you could check. I'm a four nine. Nice. You see, good conversation. Could you, that's that eye roll was so. Could you could hear the eye roll? That's how big that was. You're bragging. <laughs> I bribe them, so I just tip well. So <laughs> then, the, I, then I, I don't never have to. tip, and I'm still a four nine. I tip if you they don't do tip? something. I don't. Why? I, I don't do tip. tip. I tip. Well, here's the thing: is because there was no tip in the beginning, and then they tried to throw that in after we'd well, already. No, been Lyft has always had it. Uber just Uber Uber just started it. doing it. But you should have because you could tip. You Paul, do you drive Lyft? You're Paul always flipped me to... off. Like, I yeah, don't... because fuck you. You should fucking pay the guy that drove how, you. What, how, well, so what's like? What's a good tip then? Just like two would be. Yeah, fine. that's all you need. It depends so on how two long on the every, ride is. So two on every on every ride. Five makes my day. If it's a long okay. ride, if you, if you drive me all the way to the airport, I'll throw you a fiver. Yeah. A lot of times I'll give them cash because then like then Lyft or Uber can't take your take your money away. Like 27 miles to the airport, mm -hmm. but like I'm also putting their bags in and taking their bags out. Oh, yeah. I had a I had a, a dude take me from Glendale to my place, Mid-City, in the middle of rush hour. And he didn't have any music on like a psychopath. The whole entire ride. Why didn't you ask for some? I thought about it, but then I was like, I kind of want to just be mad about this. <laughs> I was like, I could, Girl, I could ask him, but I was like, I'm kind of just reveling in I this. I just don't like this experience, but instead of changing it, that sounds like some white lady I, feminism. Oh no, I just got like. on my phone and just didn't, but no, it was, I really wanted to sit in this moment and enjoy it. Cause I was like, I might talk about this on stage. Like I didn't want to just dismiss it and have him put on me. Like I wanted to sit in that moment and feel this, like this guy is crazy. Candace is mining for thoughts. She just opened the I notepad am. and started. Yeah, yeah. I did. I was like, I'm going to sit in this and just experience this. No, no, nothing. Here's for a, like an hour. Here's a question. With a complete, oh, and he stopped short. And like, if I hadn't had my seatbelt, my face would have planted into the passenger seat. And he didn't even turn around and say, I'm sorry, or my bad. Like, I know someone cut him off, but at the same time, acknowledge and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. He didn't do anything. He just kept, <laughs> he may have been a zombie. Uh, Paul, how do you feel about people getting in the back seat as opposed to the front seat? Do you care? For real? Yeah, they don't, they don't heard, want to be I talking heard that to from people a lot either. of drivers that they prefer because you're also it's also Take you're that. more vulnerable. You it is it's still also a stranger. Yeah, what if the what it's if the passenger still, stabs you in the neck? Yeah. 
it's like you two strangers. With your knife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't look at me. When look at Mal's face. Fine. Mal is so distraught. <laughs> I feel like I'm being more polite when I get in the front because I feel like it's such. What if a, they don't want to talk so to you though? When I'm by myself to just sit in the back. But think yeah. about all the people that they pick up. They don't want to be talking to all those people. Every time I've I've had this conversation while I'm driving and the, the like to the airport, this black dude picked me up and he's like, yeah, people never sit in the front. They just sit in the back and just zone out. So that one person. But that's like a lot of them say that to me. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I feel weird. Getting Maybe the they're back. saying that to make you See, not feel awkward about that, about sitting in the front. Because now they're like, oh, this dude just got in the front. Now I got to make him feel better about his decision. You know what my trick is? What I do is I'll, uh, I'll just say, hey, what's up? And then I'll let them initiate the conversation. Because some people want a quiet ride. Some people. Yeah, don't. absolutely. But it's also like. I'm I'm not trying to make friends. Like you don't have to be like there this is a service that you're providing. It doesn't need mean that we need to be we have to like create a relationship no, with each other. Of course not. That's psychotic. Yeah, I don't yeah, I don't I'm not looking right. to be friends. I just think it's polite to have a conversation with somebody if they're just sitting in their car all day. But I and I think about well, first of all, myself first, because I'm selfish. And I'm like, I don't feel like we do. I don't want to strike up a conversation. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Most of the time I don't. But I also think about this person having to deal like they see so many people and like they probably are tired of and like they probably just want to just veg out and just listen to their music or whatever. If they say anything, like if somebody says what's up to me, I have no problem. Let's have a chat. I'm yeah. totally cool with that. But through a rear view mirror. Yeah. Well, as a comic. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. like that. Like as a comic, the value that I've given <laughs> out of gotten out of it is like instagram followers like for shows and stuff oh yeah so, for like, sure i have like that's funny when you're like i don't want a personal cut like relationship i have like 300 people on instagram that like i know from lyft that right now we're like friendly. right yeah that's that that for sure happens and like but and that to me is a reason to do it but also like i like it when it happens organically if the conversation just happens like for example the other day i got an uber and the chick was listening to my girl amanda's podcast and i so i hear amanda's voice and i'm like oh this is hilarious you're listening she's one of my best friends and then Right. But it just a, I just didn't also like I'm, a forced conversation seems like a lot of work to me. If I, there's nothing that just sparks it. I think I think also because I'm taller, the front seat's more comfortable to me. Oh, now we're well, getting yeah, to the right? real reason. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's like another factor, too, because I don't always have a conversation. I'll say hello. And if they want to continue talking, then they can. But if not, then I'll just sit in the front. But isn't it weird then if you don't have a conversation and now you're sitting next to the person? That's no. weirder. That you, is weird. If you get in the passenger seat and then not And then you just don't driver. talk. You like there's a pressure now to entertain and perform for this person. <laughs> You don't think it's weird sitting in silence next to a complete stranger? After I've tried a couple of times to have a conversation, I just go, oh, they don't want to talk. And then I'll... And that doesn't just... hurt your feelings. No, I just Instagram at that point. I do whatever I would have done in the back seat, but I don't want to run the risk of having a conversation through the rearview mirror. Because I just... Is that a all, risk, though? Yes, I don't like it. It just feels... To me, it feels... <laughs> See, I love that scene in the movie where two people have, Me a, too. have a conversation with a taxi I don't think driver. about that at all. Hell yeah, dude. Let's chat it up. Yeah. I like barriers. Because then you can look yeah, a motherfucker I'm, in I mean, their eyes. I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm, that's why no. I asked you. You're a friendly dude, too. So, like, this is different. Like, some of the people, a lot of the people that we deal with are, like, these weirdos. That, like, you're picking them at, like, 2 in the morning at a motel or something. Right. So, like, those are the people you're kind of like. <laughs> I would really want to talk to those people. So, what happened in there? Yeah, no. Some puffing or what? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, man, I ate a whole bunch of Brussels sprouts earlier today. I see you have that oh, cake there. You going to eat it? <laughs> <laughs> I love the amount of callbacks that have happened in this episode. Oh, yeah, this is great. so fun. It's fantastic. <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed all of this. <laughs> All right, well that's good to learn. Now I'm going to I'm going to start being better and tipping. Yeah, I I didn't know what the tipping. I I didn't realize. Loans. I thought like it was the same with Lyft and Uber. I thought it was like neither one of them did tips ever and then they just started implementing it. And right. I was like, "Well, you can't have no tip cuz we know you can survive without it." And right. then just throw it in. No one's yeah. going to tip. But with Lyft, I will tip with Lyft. And I use Lyft more than I use Uber because I only use Lyft. Yeah, Uber's kind of a trash company. Yeah. But uh also you get Delta miles if you What? Uh, ride Lyft. Whoa. Delta? Yeah. Hey, yeah, are you yeah. serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mo yeah. Miles, Mo Miles, Mo Seriously. Miles. You get double miles going to the airport too. What? I didn't know that. Yes, yes. My only problem with Lyft is the cars look suspicious as fuck. I've gotten in a Tesla Lyft before. That's the only time that has ever happened. Oh. 
That's hilarious, dude. Who can afford a Tesla and is still like, fuck, dude, people I need make, money. People who make bad decisions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you ever have a Lyft driver that has paper plates, they're not responsible. Oh, yeah, yeah that makes sense. But I've, yeah, I've gotten in a Lyft before. They had a plastic bag over the window. I was like, what is this? And I'm not even kidding. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that has never happened with Uber. So Uber does have a better like, class inspected. of cars. I, th- I think that I think it's definitely more lenient with Lyft, uh-huh. which is why Paul is doing Lyft instead of because yeah, <laughs> <no>. his warrants. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. And that was a Dude, while you ago. You got a warrant? <laughs> no. If you want to see. Do a, you? Uh, no. Did I just out you on the podcast? Oh. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> My background check hasn't cleared yet <laughs> for Lyft. So. Are you just driving with a Lyft sign in your car, but you're not even <laughs> certified? It's just a piece of computer paper. Did you print wait, this wait. out, Joseph? You spelled Lyft with an I. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm mad about tips. Because <laughs> I really don't get paid. <laughs> Paul He's is getting a crazy $2 person. a ride. <laughs> I just like talking to people, all right? <laughs> Paul just pulls up in his Prius, and people don't check. They just, yeah, no, they just get it. Just Someone get tried to get in my car one time. I was like, <laughs> Me too. I am not. Lift. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, cool. I learned something. Sorry, that was like sort of a rant, but Ew. tangent that we went on there. But I think we all learned something from I it. I mean, that's been yeah. this whole podcast. This we've been, very, we've very just been, and that's what happens every time we record. It's yeah. like we try to stay fun. focused. It's a fun It tangent. does not exist. Mm-hmm. Did we do one of these already? Oh. Of, wait. It's are actually, you, are you keeping an track hour. anymore? Yeah, oh, we're at an hour already. Um, yeah, we're Cor- Corman. Oh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> this flew by so quickly. Do you feel like we resolved anything with your struggle? No, not at all. Good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> then our mission has then, been accomplished. That's exactly what we came here to do. <laughs> we never solve anybody. You, we just talk. It's just yeah. like a therapy session, and we just try to vent and like just talk about things that are on it's our minds. It's also like a show to entertain other people. Like, it's not your job to fucking no. fix my shit. Yeah, no, not we at all. Try, though. We, we try, try, though. We try, and then, you know, sometimes we make it worse, yeah. you know? And that's just, <laughs> that's our cross to bear, you know? We, we just... <laughs> we send our guests into the world more confused than they were when they came yeah. in. Dumber than when I came <laughs> into this podcast. You just made my fears more real. <laughs> I didn't even think about it like that. No, I'm even more job is done. <laughs> um... Thank you for listening, uh, guys. Again, I appreciate you very much. So spread the word about this podcast if you are not doing that. Uh, it's the, you know, it's the holiday season is approaching. You so know. doodly do. Yeah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Don't forget to suck on my cock or whatever it is. That's how it goes. <laughs> so, you know, just, and, you know, it's it's the giving season and, you know, pay it forward by telling people about this podcast so you can find me one more time i'm gonna go around and everyone's social media you can find me at jokes by candace on social media candace thompson comedy.com um i'm always at the comedy store uh also if you did not hear the top of the show i'm going to be doing a taping next tuesday which is the day this is going to be dropping so the day that you're listening to this if you're listening to on tuesday the 30th and you want to come to a taping that i'm doing that night for the e-network hit me up in my dms it's the only time i will be open to you sliding into my dms (laughs) what nothing your face what are you laughing at we just i don't know she made eye contact with me and then she laughed and then i felt like i should laugh too Oh, it was just pressure. You, oh, you don't have to laugh because I laugh. I mean... Oh, I just called you out. I thought you were laughing at me, so that's why I did it. Oh. Because that's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing funny about Candace Thompson. Ever. <laughs> uh, Always. Mal, where can people find you? People can unfollow me at malhall.com, at malhall on all social media, and Hall TV on YouTube. Corman, one more again. Hi. Uh, you can follow me uh, at The Funny Carmen on all the assorted social media or go to CarmenMorales.com for all of your Carmen Morales needs. Also, I will be in the, the Richmond Funny Bone uh, November 7th and at Kazi's in Newport News, Virginia, November 8th and 9th and 10th, maybe. And then uh, on Sunday at the Virginia Beach Funny Bone. Um, if you guys want to see stand-up comedy and there's people in Virginia. Virginia, that's yeah. where my family is. Yeah, so tell them. I do have some family in Richmond now. Well, they probably won't like me, but... Tell them know. to bring the prosthetic oh, leg out to the show, Candace. I don't know if they have a Carmen will it. sign it. I don't even know if they found it. 
<laughs> that's some that's some bird's home right now. <laughs> like some bird just was like, ooh. I did have a guy shake his prosthetic leg at me once at a show, like because In I anger? busted. Yeah, because I was. Um, it was me and another comic. We were went on stage. We're like, let's do it, and we started. He started trying to heckle, and I was like, oh no. So you don't do that. So then I started making fun of him, and then and I was just busting his balls, and he was you know obviously losing. Of his, course. And then it was me and, and another comic. So whatever he would like the comic on stage would just build on what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And then when he said he, when he shook his prosthetic leg off, th- then it was like, oh my God, he just gave me so much more material. Yeah, why? And then I was like, is that where you keep your wallet? <laughs> you keep your wallet in there? Is that where you in his leg. You dig it? <laughs> Did he think, I think in that he was trying to make you feel badly about heckling him. Do you think that I was the purpose? Afterwards, he was, he loved it. He's oh. like, nobody ever fucks with me. That was hilarious. That's great. Like, that's oh, okay. That's kind of like there was a Key and Peele sketch, Peel sketch where they did that, where <laughs> oh, the guy yeah. started heckling an audience member and then they put the spotlight on him. And he was a burn victim. <laughs> like, third <laughs> degree burn. Do it to me. <laughs> yeah. I can take it. I can it. take it. He had like one of them. <laughs> yeah. So good. That's they go cool. so dark on that. And I love it. Um, oh, you just reminded me. Uh, I wanted to plug in December, December 6th through 8th, I'll be at the DC Improv with Roy Wood Jr. So nice. yes, for people in uh, that area who love me and love Roy, you're going to get it's definitely everything it should be you've called ever dreamed. What's not to love tour because yeah. you guys are so likable. Yeah, are we? Yeah. Aww. It's like two of everyone's favorite things together, like Reese's Cups. Mm. That's the first time I've ever said Reese's Cups properly. I usually say Reese. Definitely pay to go see Roy Wood Jr., everybody. It's a good show. Why would His you say special that? was incredible. He's He's the best. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. And follow him on Instagram too. Yeah, everyone follow. I routinely laugh out loud on the airplane. <laughs> yeah, no. He's everything he says, watch his Instagram stories. Roy Wood Jr. on the Daily Show. Um, he's should be a household name and he will be. But yeah, uh, come to that the sixth through eighth of December. And I think that's it. You guys, thank this has been fantastic. And hey, thanks for thanks listening. For, thanks for having me on. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.